Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us. My name is Frederick John. I'm going to be the instructor for this course. This is the first course in the Rails specialization. Uh, this is an introduction to Ruby on Rails. So what I'm doing now is I'm downloading a fresh copy of Ubuntu. I'm going to be using Parallels and that's where I'm going to be installing uh, uh, Ruby, Rails, uh, uh, JavaScript runtime. Um, I'm going to be installing Node, Node.js. Uh, we're going to get everything set up there uh, to run Ruby on Rails applications, to develop Ruby on Rails applications, and then push them into production. So while that's downloading, let's um, let's take a look at a couple things. Rails is a a web framework, and here I am on RubyOnRails.org. This is what I first saw, uh, something similar to this, um, a while back, and and made me want to learn Rails. It said, "Imagine what you could build if you learned Ruby on Rails." And I know that a lot of successful websites have been built on Rails, and this really is something that I think we should stop and take a second to think about. Imagine what you could build if you learned Ruby on Rails. You see, Rails being a, a fantastic web framework gives you, as a developer, so much power to harness. And you can take this power, and with this you can create these awesome websites web applications and you can do things that were before much more difficult for you or maybe you were unable to do but with rails it's like when peter parker was bitten by the spider okay he was peter parker when he got bit by that radioactive spider he became spider-man that gave him superpowers and now he became a superhuman and he's stopping crime. He's a superhero. That's what Rails is going to do for you. It's going to take you from Peter Parker and turn you into Spider-Man. It does that through a bunch of different ways. Using convention over configuration is a very big part of it. Um, but essentially, a lot of the things that, that need to be built are already built for you. And you just need to utilize what's already been set up and what's already been built. So let's take a minute and and see what kind of websites have been created with Ruby on Rails. You have Basecamp, Shopify, Airbnb, Square, Hulu, I know Groupon was. There's been a lot of websites that have switched um, to using Rails or got their start developing with Rails. Uh, Rails makes it very easy for a company to go from a company or a, a team of developers or even one developer to go from an idea, a small side project, and to get that into production and to get that operating. And time to market is significantly reduced when you're using Ruby on Rails because you can develop so much faster than with other uh, web frameworks and other technologies. So we're going to be working with Rails 5.0.1 that was released on December 21st, 2016. So this is a an, an up-to-date course. We are not working with old technology. We're working with um, you know the the cutting edge, the bleeding edge, the newest technology that's out there, the newest releases. Rails 5.0.1. Rails was created by DHH, this guy, this gentleman right here. He's an author, the creator of Rails, a very successful uh, programmer, a very successful race car driver. Um, he's a best-selling author. He's won a couple races. He does some amateur photography. Beautiful family. That's the creator of Rails. Okay, so it looks like we have our Linux virtual machine up and running. Now, again, this is running on Parallels. You could see it's... Ubuntu Linux 16.04. Now, if you're not sure what version you have, there's a command that you can run cat etc star dash release. So type the command just like that. It's going to give you all of the distribution information. Ubuntu 16.04. So if you have this same system, 16. Uh, 10 or 14.10 .10, 
the newer releases they're pretty much going to be uh, about the same you could follow along if there's any issues that arise you could try to google it and see what that particular issue is but i've installed it on several different ubuntu systems um, and they usually work with the exact same commands so we're going to get started uh, setting up our environment so the first thing that we're going to do is install rbenv which is our ruby version manager we can clone the repository get clone and then the location of the repository and that's going to give us rbenv now the next thing that we have to do is add it to our path and to do that we're going to type this command in here we're going to add it to our bash rc we can do that by using the echo command um, also I wanted to mention if you had a problem running the last command if for example you don't have git installed you can install that with sudo apt-get install git and that will give you git it will only take a few seconds to install so right now we're going to add our benef to our path now when you type a command like this in for example and you don't get any errors then generally that means that it worked everything was fine if something did not work generally you'll get an error so because we got our command prompt returned to us that means everything's fine then there's one other command that we'll have to run now that we've added it to our path we can continue okay I opened up the editor here with the last few commands in them because I always forget um, we're gonna have to install the Ruby build so that way we, we can use the rbenv install command so uh, now after you add it to your path what you're gonna want to do is source tilde and then the hidden file which is your, the bash rc is a hidden file that's what the dot means so in the directory that's hidden bash rc that will source the bash rc now we need to install Ruby build so that way we can install Ruby with rbenv and we'll simply run that command I'm going to copy paste okay everything is done and then you can install with rbenv install and then you just put the version number so I'm going to type rbenv install and we'll use the latest version which is 2.4 okay 2.4 4 is not an option that is available here I forgot to add the zero so we'll do our bad install 2.4.0 now this will install the latest version of Ruby onto our system it will take maybe five minutes ten minutes depending on the system that you have so I'm gonna let this install and then continue the video when this is all done okay everything's just finished installing I do want to show you one thing I went to install Ruby 2.40 and it started downloading it and then it said build failed and then it gave me the error message it logged it to this file right here and gave me the location so I can access it but then it also provided the last 10 lines so that I can see uh, there were some extensions that were not compiled and it gives you the error message Ruby install aborted due to missing extensions and it also gives you the solution that you should that you should do um, run this command to install these extensions and you get all the missing dependencies so that's something that I had to do I had to install that as sudo and after I did that it installed everything that I needed for the dependencies I can then install Ruby 2.4 and now I should be able to do Ruby dash V and it's still not working aha I know why we have not set a global version so what we're gonna do is rbenv global 2.4.0 and this is going to say unless otherwise specified use 2.4 as our default version of Ruby and now Ruby V gives me 2.4.0 so now we have Ruby installed everything's installed completely to install rails which is a gem we simply have to do gem install rails
this will install the latest version of Rails because we didn't specify a version to install. Now it's going to automatically install the latest version, which I believe is 5.0.1. Okay, so it's installed the latest version of Rails. Now, if you're using RBen as your Ruby version manager, you do have to run a specific command, which is rehash. After you run the rehash command, you should be able to do Rails dash dash version, and it's going to return 5.0.1. And if we do Ruby dash v 2.4, so now we have everything that we need to begin developing Ruby on Rails applications.